Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the differences between the raw file format and the JPEG file format. This is gonna be kind of high level. There's a lot to it. And uh, the article that this video is embedded in has more information, but I thought it'd be fun to at least show you some stuff instead of just writing about it. And so we're in Lightroom over here and I have basically the same exact file. This is the raw file that was saved with my Sony A7R Mark III. You can see it's a raw file because in the grid view, I have the ARW uh, file format. That's Sony's raw file format. You can see some of the other camera information over here as well. And right next to it is an identical full resolution JPEG of that photo. And you know it's the same because one, uh, the resolution count 42.2 megapixels is the same. And also if we look over here on the right, the actual dimensions, the resolution is the same. Uh, if I go from the JPEG to the raw, uh, the numerical values are the same. Now, before we do some editing, which really showcases the differences between raw and JPEG, I wanna show you something else. So here in my finder, I've got the actual files. Um, so, you know, here are two files, but in finder, you actually see three. Let me talk about that for a minute. So here, this is the ARW file that I was just talking about, and this is the JPEG file. Um, now, a lot of times you'll hear people talk about raw editing workflows as non-destructive. And the primary reason for that is because in Lightroom, when I'm adjusting sliders or adding presets or doing anything, I'm never actually doing anything to this file. This file does not ever get touched. So no matter what, as long as I have a backup of it, um, I don't have to worry about overwriting it or losing the settings. That's where this file comes in. You can see it's an XMP file. This is commonly referred to as a sidecar file. And you'll notice that the file name is the same. So there's MAT08486, same file name, except it has the XMP file format, which again is typically used for raw sidecars. Now let's go ahead, let's right click on this. We'll go to open with, and I'm gonna select text edit, which is the built-in uh, Mac text editor. So I'm gonna click it and click open. And so here we have all of the information that pertains to this raw file. And that's what makes it non-destructive is that no matter what I do, we're never actually writing information to the raw file. It's all stored in the sidecar. And you can see as I scroll, I've got some EXIF information that's written from the camera, as well as some other variables uh, based on the edits that I make. So again, as long as I've got uh, the raw file and the corresponding sidecar file, I'm working in a non-destructive workflow. And what's important to note is that if I want to share, say this image here with the edits that I make, and I wanna share it as a raw, I need to make sure that I provide both of these files. If I only give the raw file without the XMP, as soon as a user loads the raw file into their raw editor, like Lightroom, for example, a new sidecar file will get created without the edits. Whereas with a JPEG, when I export the image, so let's say I work on this raw file and I export it with the edits to JPEG, that is now a lossy, destructive workflow. All of the edits made are baked into this JPEG. And if I share it with you, on one hand, all I need to do is share one file and you'll have all of my edits. But if you were to open this image in Lightroom, you would not have access to any of the edits that I made. And again, that's what makes it destructive. If you make edits in Lightroom to a JPEG and then you export it out as another JPEG, again, you're creating a new destructive file. And so that's the benefit of working in a non-destructive raw workflow is that as long as you've got the raw and the sidecar file, you have access to all of the edits so you can make minor tweaks whenever you want. All right, now let's go back to Lightroom over here. Obviously, you'll see the most difference between raw and JPEG when you're actually editing. And so I've got this photo here. Um, I took this in Norway, and uh, obviously the dynamic range of the scene is very challenging. It was taken at night, but you can see that uh, there were some uh, northern lights on display, which was great. Um, but I had to basically expose it in such a way where I didn't blow out the northern lights. It's very easy to do, which is why it's so dark. And if we go back to grid view, take a look here at the histogram and watch as I toggle from the raw to the JPEG. Do you see here how the histogram slightly changes? 
And that has to do with the advantages of RAW and talking about things like the difference in color depth or bit depth, as well as the additional information that a RAW file stores that normally gets tossed out when you're working with a lossy compressed uh, file format like the JPEG. So what I'm gonna do is with this image selected, this is the raw file, I'll go to develop here, and all I'm gonna do is edit the photo uh, using these sliders here and the tone curve. I'm not gonna do anything else. Um, and actually white balance, and that's an important point. So before we do any edits, here's another advantage with working in raw. Getting a correct white balance is really important for achieving proper color, and also it helps get rid of any color casts that you might get, especially when you're using, say, like a neutral density or a polarizer filter. Now, with raw, check this out. If I drop down here, you can see all of these options, and these are the actual options that I have from my camera. So when you're using your camera and you're shooting in RAW, you can change your white balance on there. Or if you are shooting in RAW, you have the ability to change your white balance after the fact. If we go ahead and go one over to the JPEG, notice the difference here, we don't have that. That's one of the things that gets tossed out when you convert from a RAW to a JPEG file format workflow. But that's not to say that you can't adjust the white balance. You can use the color picker, you can select auto, for example, here, or you can just do your own custom one. It's just that with the raw file, you have actual camera sensor data here to build your white balance profile. And so let's go ahead and start editing. I'm gonna open up the exposure and let's go ahead and fix shadows and highlights. So what I like to do with shadows is, um, I like to press and hold on the option key or the alt key and click, and you'll get this kind of a mask view. And it's not that you have to like get rid of or open up all of your shadows. This is a very dark scene, so it's okay to have some really dark areas. Um, I know a lot of photographers will want to kind of like open up the shadows and the black point to the point where there's like nothing. And you see how that just doesn't look realistic. So I'm gonna undo those really quickly and I'll open up the black point just a bit, but I wanna make sure that I retain that natural contrast. Go ahead, we'll open up exposure just a bit more. Now let's do the same thing. We'll press and hold the option or alt key and click on highlights. And here you can see these are the areas where the highlights are blown out. So I wanna recover that. And again, when you're working with the raw, you have access to so much more dynamic range information. So it's a lot easier to recover that uh, the highlights and the shadows. All right, so we did talk about white balance, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my white balance dropper here, and I'm gonna select an area here that should be white that none of the other lights in the surrounding area are really affecting, and I'll click on it. And you can see that it did get rid of that color cast, but it did make it a bit cooler, so I'm gonna actually warm the temperature up just a tiny bit there. And finally, I'm gonna to go to the tone curve here, and I'm gonna apply a very, very basic S curve here, I'm um, dropping a dot to increase the highlights a bit and then drop a dot over here in this area to add a little bit of shadow detail and then in the middle, which will open up the, uh, the mid-tones. And here let's toggle the tone curve just to see. So that adds a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna go back to the shadows and open those up a bit more. It got a little too dark for my taste. And so here we're looking pretty good, right? especially if we compare the original. I mean, look at that. And look at all that information we were able to recover. Last thing I will do here is bring the black point out just a bit there. Okay, good, now we're looking really good. And now let's go ahead and we will work on the JPEG. And just like before, we're gonna edit it to taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the exposure. And I can already tell as I'm opening up the exposure, like compared to the raw file, I need to open this up a lot more to even get to a decent starting point. The problem is that I'm really blowing out highlights even more. So again, with a JPEG, you don't have nearly as much dynamic range or tonal information to work with compared to a raw file. So I'm actually gonna bring this down just a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the shadows. Again, option or alt key, hold it down while dragging. Uh, same thing here with the black point. Let's open that up just a bit. And let's go with the highlights and recover some of those. Now we could go ahead and try to select a similar area with the white balance dropper. And it does an okay job. 
Um, you can see that the values are completely different compared to the raw file. I will warm it up just a bit, just like before though. And let's go ahead to the tone curve here. Let's add a very, very slight S curve. And let's open up the midpoint. And let's compare the original. So just like before, same starting point. And here is where we got to. So now let's go to the grid view and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the edited raw file as well as the JPEG file. And then I'm gonna press on C to put us in comparison view mode. And let's uh, go into blackout mode and compare the two. All right, so just looking at these at full view, I can see that the colors in the raw file are a lot more accurate. Um, the ones on the JPEG look like they're being crushed a bit compared to the raw. But if we go ahead and let's look at some specific areas along the tonal range. So let's look at the shadows and you can see that the shadows here, the detail in the shadows on the raw file are a lot cleaner, they're deeper. Whereas on the JPEG side of things, it just looks a little muddy. And that's a common issue when trying to recover shadow details with JPEGs. Also, the raw file is just sharper overall. Now, uh, there's obviously noise in here because I had to shoot at a higher ISO, so I would send this to, to Denoise AI afterwards. But for now, I just want to show you the version before doing any noise reduction. Also, another thing to note, let's talk about highlights. Look at the window here. You can see that you have more information uh, with the highlights and the midtones compared to here, um, where a lot of that is still lost. If we kind of zoom out and go to say this area here, same thing. You have more information in the facade of this building as well as down here in the reflection compared to the JPEG where it's mostly blown out. Uh, same thing over here. You have just more information um, on the left here in the with the raw file than you do on the right with the JPEG file. Now this is only just one example and that's not to say that there's anything that's like majorly wrong with the JPEG. If you just had the JPEG to work with, as you can see, the, you know, you get decent results. It's totally functional. And especially if you want to share this on social media or put it on your website, it's totally fine. But the point is that when you're editing your photos, or at least I know when I want to edit my photos, I want to make sure that I give myself every advantage as possible. And really the only way that you can ensure that is by shooting in raw, because when you have a raw file, you are working with the actual sensor data. When you're working with a JPEG file, that file has already been run through a lossy compression algorithm, which takes a lot of that sensor information and throws it away. And these days with SD cards and CF cards, uh, they're so much less expensive and they have much higher capacities compared to when I first started shooting in digital. So it's not much of an excuse to say that, oh, well, raw files are much larger than JPEGs. That's true. But the cost of both the removable storage for your camera, as well as the hard drives and SSD drives for your computer, the prices for those have come down significantly and the capacities have really increased. And so I hope this video gives you a better idea about the differences between working in a raw workflow and a JPEG workflow. It's really important to know and to make sure that you're using the one that best suits your needs. And I did mention that I'm gonna send this photo to Denoise AI to get rid of all that noise. If you wanna try Denoise AI for free, head over to topazlabs.com and download a free trial today. Thanks a lot.